If you're feeling a little bit of whiplash from all of the rate cuts in the news, you're not alone. The Bank of Canada has just announced another 0.25% rate cut. But the question is, is it too little too late. You know, if you're wondering how this is going to affect your ability to buy a home or maybe refinance your mortgage, here's the reality. These small rate cuts, while they may sound good on the surface, they're really just barely moving the needle when it comes to your buying power. Now that said, if you're strategic about things, there may be a way that you can come out ahead. Today I'm going to break down what the major banks are predicting for future rate cuts, why these recent rate cuts may not have the impact that you were hoping for, and what you should be watching to truly understand how these changes will affect you. Plus, I'm going to dive into what all of this means for the greater Vancouver real estate market in 2024 and 2025. And be sure to stick around until the end because I'm also going to share my predictions and the predictions made by the major banks on whether more rate cuts will be coming and what it all means to you and the market, which is something you are definitely not going to want to miss. All right, so let's get started with the basics. First of all, as you might have heard, the Bank of Canada has just announced a third consecutive 0.25% rate cut, bringing the overnight rate down to 4.25%. And while this might sound like a step in the right direction, it's simply not enough to make significant differences for most buyers. Here's the thing, a 0.25% rate cut, it might sound good on paper, but when you break it down, it just doesn't translate to much in your pocket. For these cuts to really make any sort of difference, especially for fixed rate mortgages, we're gonna need to see more substantial cuts over time. Uh, and so until we see those bigger cuts, you're going to be stuck with tiny changes that don't really help most buyers. By the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is Glenn Hopkins and I create videos all about Canadian real estate and my local market of Surrey and White Rock, BC. So if that is something you're interested in, please be sure to go ahead and subscribe right now. Hit that button and that way you're not going to miss out on any of my upcoming videos. Also, if you would like my help with either buying or selling a home, there is a link in the description box below where you can schedule a call with me. All right, so let's talk about variable rates first because these are directly tied to the Bank of Canada's policy rate. Now, when the bank cuts rates, your variable rate uh, mortgage, the rate should also decrease. But here's the catch. Even with this latest cut, variable rates are still hovering around 5% or slightly lower. Now, sure, that is an improvement from last year's peak of, you know, 6 or 7%, but it's still high compared to what we all got used to during the pandemic. And with these small rate cuts, the impact on your monthly payments are minimal. We're talking about just a few bucks for every $100,000 that you have borrowed. Now, when we look at fixed rates, this is where things could get a little bit more interesting. Fixed rates are influenced by bond yields, not just directly by the Bank of Canada's rate cuts. And recently, bond yields have been trending downwards, which has helped bring down the cost of fixed rate mortgages. But Here's the problem. The cuts we're seeing now, right now, they're too small to create any significant changes in the bond yield. So while fixed rates have dropped slightly, they remain higher than many people would like and they're not coming down nearly fast enough to make a real difference in people's buying power. And that brings us to the real question, you know, which is better, a variable rate or a fixed rate? Now, you know, if you're a bit of a gambler and you think that rates are gonna continue dropping, a variable rate could save you a little bit of money over the long run. But if you're looking for more peace of mind and you wanna dodge the uncertainty that actually burned a lot of people just recently, looking into a three-year fixed rate at around 4.5% could be a safer bet, even if it means that you're paying a little bit more now. So I'm curious, go ahead, let me know in the comments below, what route would you take? Would you take the risk or would you play it more on the safe side? All right, let's go ahead and switch gears and talk a little bit about your buying power. Now, every time the Bank of Canada cuts rates, your borrowing power should, in theory at least, go up. 
But with these tiny 0.25% cuts, the effect is almost going to be invisible to you. I mean, sure, lower rates might mean slightly lower monthly payments, but not enough to really change what you can afford, at least not yet, okay? So, and this is where things get a little bit tricky because waiting around for those deeper rate cuts could backfire on you. You know, while you're waiting for the, the perfect rate, housing prices might start climbing. And if prices rise faster than rates drop, any savings from a lower interest rate is going to more than likely get wiped out by the higher purchase price of your home. So, you know, just for example's sake, let's say you're, you're eyeing a $700,000 home, hoping that rates are going to drop from 5% to 4.5% before you buy. Now, if that happens, your monthly payment on a 25-year mortgage after a 20% down payment would drop from about three, uh, $3,250 to roughly $3,120. So that's a savings of $130 per month. But now I want you to imagine that while you're waiting for the rate to drop, the price of your home goes up by 5%, which really isn't unlikely in the Vancouver market area. Now that $700,000 home would now cost you $735,000. And at the new lower rate of 4.5%, your monthly payment would now be around $3,270. That's actually $20 more per month than if you had bought at the higher rate, but the lower price. Now, I know what you might be thinking, you know, what's a few extra bucks each month? But here's the real kicker. Over the course of a 25-year mortgage, that price difference adds up to tens of thousands of dollars more in interest payments alone. And that's money out of your pocket. Now, this is the risk of playing the waiting game. The price of you know, your home could climb faster than rates coming down, leaving you paying much more over time. That interest is a nasty, nasty thing. So sometimes the smarter move is to buy now at today's rates and lock in the current price, betting that when it comes time for you to renew your mortgage in three to five years, the cost of housing will have gone up while your mortgage rates might be lower. Now, of course, there's no guarantees here, but you know, if you keep an eye on the market and you make an informed choice, you could come out ahead uh, with both a, uh, a more valuable home and potentially lower payments down the road. Now, in a second, I'm about to share what could be the biggest game changer for the market in 2024 and 2025. But first, if you're finding any value from this video, please do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. Would you, it just takes me a second and it would really help me get the word out to other people just like you looking for this kind of information. All right, so what's in store for us and the greater Vancouver real estate market in 2024 and 2025. You know, as discussed with the recent minor rate cuts, we're not seeing any massive surge in the buying power just now of buyers. But according to experts at TD and CIBC, the Bank of Canada could deliver up to another 1.75% in rate cuts over the next year or so, potentially bringing the overnight rate down to around 2.75%. Now, if this happens, it could really shake things up. But for now, you know, we've got two conflicting trends that we're dealing with. On the one hand, the, the forecasted lower rate should, at least in theory, get buyers off the fence as they start to see lower mortgage costs decreasing, okay? But on the other hand, some economic signals are not looking so great. Job losses and reduced consumer confidence could actually keep a lot of people sitting on the sidelines afraid of making any big financial decisions. So what does this mean for Greater Vancouver? Uh, you know, if I had to predict, I would say we're going to see a mixed market. There's going to be certain segments like entry level condos. They could experience a modest uptick in activity as affordability improves with these future 
future rate cuts. However, the higher end market, such as detached homes and luxury properties, they may kind of remain flat or even experience further price reductions because you know high net uh, worth buyers they might continue to take the cautious approach amid all of these economic uncertainties waiting to see how the rate uh, cuts actually unfold now i'm going to reveal the final most critical factor that could determine the market's fate in just a minute but first before i do that if you are getting any value from this video do me a favor and give me that quick thumbs up okay i really do appreciate that Okay, so here's the thing. What is the final factor that could make or break the market in 2024 and beyond? Well, it's all about inventory. I want you to keep an eye on inventory levels because if we start seeing a surge in new listings from homeowners looking to capitalize on the perceived market strength due to these lower rates, we could face downward pressure on prices. Remember, it's not just about demand. Supply also plays a very critical role in this. Now, I know we've covered a lot in this video, so if you've got questions or you need some personalized advice, feel free to book a call with me. Use the link in the description box below. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video.